Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Angie. And, and together, together we, we are, are Twinfinity. Twinfinity. We're Twin Flames back with another Tips to Union video. This one is actually going to be one that all of you have, well, most all of you have requested. It's um, tips to helping your twin heal. First of all, where we are. We're just hiding out in our backyard. It is the first day of spring 2019. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. There's spring, see, There's sunshine. Sunshine behind us. And, and flowers. We have flowers. <laughs> Actually, they're not spring flowers. The ground's still frozen around here. Well, they're spring flowers, but they came from the store, not the ground right now. Yeah. It's going to be another month before we see flowers around here. Yes. <laughs> so now just to clarify, um, as always with our Tips to Union videos, we're first of all always talking about union within, then if it's something you desire, union with your twin, and of course, most importantly, is union with everyone because we are moving more and more into unity consciousness as we all ascend and help the planet ascend. So we're not just doing these videos to help you get into union with your twin flame, we're doing them for a much larger reason. This topic, though, kind of maybe negates that from what I just said, but in a sense it doesn't. There's some kind of controversy around this topic of helping your twin heal because some people think, well, you should be focusing on your own healing and not helping your twin and all of that kind of stuff. But the way I look at it, we are one with our twin. We are connected. So as we heal ourselves, we're naturally going to help them heal. And because we're connected, we have a special bond to help each other heal. So why not use that bond? I'm going to have to kind of keep watch of where my sunshine is. <laughs> and of course, the sunshine is going to continually work around to your left side, which means you're going to have to continually move away from me yes. to cover the sunshine. Yes, I, and it's hard to do because I naturally want to move closer to you, not further away. So with the thought of helping the twin heal, there's the 3D in-person helping that a person can do to help educate uh, their twin to help them bring clo bring them closer to balances and then there's the 5d portions where you're working on yourself to help the energy within you I'd say transmit smoother better more healing energy towards your twin and also there's the connectiveness with your twin which is a more deliberate action still in 5d yes and on that topic, what's really cool that we just kind of piece together. So first of all, we normally do our videos sometime during the week and post them on a Wednesday, which we're doing this video today on Wednesday, March 20th, which is not only a full moon, but also the spring equinox. We did not plan that. We had planned to have our video out by today, not doing it today. It just didn't work out all week. Last night we were going to do it and we just both felt tired. We didn't feel grounded. As I posted today on uh, Facebook and YouTube and whatnot about not feeling grounded, which I know a lot of you have been feeling with these energies. Yeah, yesterday would have just been wooden. Yeah. Wooden would, would have been. Just wasn't the right timing. Yeah. And so what's so neat is because we're talking about helping your twin flame heal, what, what is that all about? It's about balance. What is a full moon? It's about balance where the, the sun and the moon are at equal and opposite directions from each other. What is spring equinox? It is another balance in the, in the swing of the earth and its tilt, etc. It's equal day and equal night. Totally. Could we have planned that? No. Didn't even think about it no, until we didn't. today. We completely didn't. So gotta love the universe's timing. So on that note, let's get into our tips of uh, helping your twin flame heal. Now, again, we're only going to be sharing five tips. There's many, many ways. Uh, yes. So feel free to add your own to the uh, bottom of the, the video and your comments. You know, help each other. Share, share your own techniques if you feel so inclined. So the first one we wanted to talk about was one that we both experienced a long time ago when we met. Um, and it's much like Rob was saying about the 3D versus the 5D. So in the twin flame dynamic, there is, I'm going to say almost always, because I, I don't know for sure. I'm not in everybody's twin flame connection. But there's usually what's called a matrix twin or a 3D twin and a spiritual twin 
or a 5D twin. So one of you is more grounded and very earthy, very human, while the other one is much more into the 5D, much more into the spiritual stuff, and not always so grounded. For us... That was polite. <laughs> <laughs> for us, he's the grounded one, I'm the 5D one. Not, so, not that she doesn't have groundedness. I not, didn't. And not that I... <laughs> Not that I don't have 5D, but we both started out in our extremes. Yes. And when you're both in your extremes, you can first, first and foremost, it's best if you can help yourself. Because, of course, you can't help someone else until you're in a more grounded or balanced place yourself. So if you find you're more the 5D spiritual twin, which it's most commonly those that are the ones watching videos and stuff like that, because the 3D twin is just off living 3D life, which is totally okay. That's, that's their role. They're keeping everything grounded. So as the 5D twin, you first want to ground yourself and feel a balance between your 5D self and your 3D self. When you're there, then you can start to help your 3D twin raise up into their 5D self. And you're saying, well, how do I do this? Even if you're not in 3D communication with them, energetically, because your naturally abilities are in the 5D, you can work with them in meditation and just help them ground, help, or sorry, help them raise up into 5D. You can um, send them energy and you can talk with them tele telepathically, which we're going to be talking about as another tip. But if you're the 3D person and you need to help your 5D person ground, Rob has yeah. some amazing ways that he used to do that for me that we didn't even realize at first that we were doing. It just always felt just so right. You know, we'd be at my apartment way back years ago and Angie'd be sitting on the couch and I would lay down on the floor. I, I'd, I'd heard a mantra from someone where if you're standing and you're stressed, sit down. And if you're sitting down and you're stressed, lie down. So... You know, when, when things weren't necessarily going perfect between Angie and I, when we were talking lots of words but not communicating at all because it was words from completely different angles, there would be times where I'd be laying down in front of the couch on the floor doing my best to just be grounded myself. <laughs> and I would reach over and I would grab her feet and I would start to play with her feet. I would play with her toes. I would rub her feet and... And, you know, you would even the kiss, anchor, though. Even you were kiss so her sweet. feet. I'd be playing with her feet, playing with her feet. Yeah. And what I wasn't really cluing into, I, I thought I was just being nice. And also being nice would also help me feel grounded. I thought that I, I enjoy being nice to people. So it was kind of nurturing for myself. But a lot of people, of course, when you're on your feet, your feet are the closest to the ground. I was working on Angie's grounding. I was working on her feet. Yeah. I always knew there was something special going on when he was doing this, but I never really understood what it was until many years later. I was so out of balance because I was so in 5D, talking with angels and connecting with spirits and reading all these spiritual books that I was not grounded at all. And Rob intuitively knew that. So you can help your twin in all sorts of ways if you know, by helping them balance when you're in a balanced place. Just to, just to clarify here, I knew she wasn't grounded. I didn't know that what I was doing was helping ground. <laughs> yeah, you very much <laughs> knew I wasn't grounded. <laughs> <laughs> so the second tip is honoring separation. And I know all of you right now are going, oh, oh I know. You're all cringing going, but I hate the separation. The separation <sighs> is a time of learning for both. And when you can't be together, when you, when the communication isn't the best, or if somebody is just desperate to go out and learn more, spend more time away, gather information, whether they know they're doing it or not, the separation is just so important. Yeah, because what happens when you first come together as twin flames, divine partners, before all the triggering happens and all the crap comes up that still needs healing, you you bond and you have that magic connection, right? It's like your two or your, your one soul comes back to itself and ignites and there's just light and love. 
And then all of a sudden, all of the triggers start happening, all of the mirrors, because what's happening is all that stuff that still needs coming up for, still needs healing, starts bubbling up to come out and be released. And that's usually what causes the separation is all those triggers. You just finally come to a point where you can't be around each other. So know that when the separation happens, instead of grabbing onto your twin going, no, don't leave, you know, and, and, and trying to do the chasing energy, just let go. Just surrender them in love, in peace, and know that they need to go. Because it's, it's usually, again, the 3D person that is leaving. Not always. Again, you know, there's, there's no rules in the twin flame journey. Yeah, it just tends to be the more, more aware person that knows about this stuff. That just knows it's time to go. <laughs> yes, that understands this far better. Usually, yep. usually the 3D person is just going, nope, not comfortable. Time to not be together. Yeah. So instead of trying to pull them back and text them and message them and, you know, all the drama that can go on, just surrender allow the time and in that time of separation instead of putting your focus so much on them which I know we're talking about this video is putting your focus on them but again it's a balance put your focus on you too. spend your time healing and let them heal in whatever way instead of going well they're not doing this well they're not doing that that's okay because each twin heals in their own way the 3d matrix twin which can often be the masculine energy. Again, there's no rules. So if it's not in your case, that's totally fine. But they heal very differently than the 5D or often feminine energy twin. So the feminine energy will be going, well, they're not doing this and they're not doing that. And they're not watching these videos and they're not getting coaching and they're not getting counseling and they're not going for this. Totally okay. Instead of looking at what they're not doing, Focus on what you can do for you. I found that as the more 3D of the twin of us, that what <laughs> I happened... like that, the twin of us. <laughs> <laughs> I found that I actually took myself out of balance, out of groundedness, trying to, trying to follow Angie to wherever she was going. And I found that in times when we weren't together, I was back rebalancing, regrounding myself, re-energizing myself. Uh, maybe not necessarily for another go around of trying to understand the 5D connection that I didn't understand back then anyway, but it was very necessary to have time away from Angie just so that I could just be myself and recollect myself again. Yes. So, yes. And focus on your, what, what was being triggered in you that needed healing. Yes. Instead of always looking just at my stuff and my issues. So honor, the, a lot. so honor the separation that your twin needs from a point of view of the separation is necessary for their inner growth and grounding. As well as yours. Now, if that separation also has them with somebody else, that brings us to point number three. Yes. Honor other partners. Yes. And I know, again, this is one that a lot of people cringe at because they can't handle the thought of their twin being with somebody else. It's like their ego gets triggered going, but I'm their greatest love. How, how could they even think to be with somebody else? Because I can't, which is very common. One of you is like, I can't even think of you know, being around another person, but yet my twin is off having fun with other women or men. My twin is getting married to someone else. They're happy. They're posting on social media, how joyful they are. And you're like, I hate this other person. When we were talking about honoring separation as point number two, we were talking about it from a point of view of learning. Sometimes learning involves a teacher. <laughs> Somebody who provides experiences, positive and negative, doesn't matter. Experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. <laughs> After a while of not getting what you want, sometimes you can start to looking you start looking forward to what you really what you really want and need. But somewhere along the line, usually it, it takes another person or persons to uh, provide the atmosphere for the teaching, which then provides the opportunity for the learning. So if your twin's off with someone else, it's probably a learning experience. 
Yes, which is helping them learn the things they need to learn so they can come back to you as a more whole, balanced, and healed person. So, again, what we always say is celebrate when they're off with someone else. I know it's hard because our ego gets bruised and we're like, but, but I'm their greatest love. But if you can look at that other person and go, thank God they're with someone else because they're learning the things that they clearly can't learn from me because we're triggering each other too much. When you talk about knowing that someone's your greatest love, that's something that you know and they probably have to figure out sometimes on their own and they just need a little encouragement to figure, figure that out. I'm glad you said that because that brings in contrast. Oftentimes our twins need to go off with somebody else because then it helps them see what they had with you that they didn't even really know they had. So that's a good point. Even if it is about reinforcing good times that they didn't really understand, as long as it's reinforcing something or teaching something, can't deny them that. I'd like, I'd, uh, you probably could try to deny them that, but they're going to go out there and learn that anyway. They're going to learn it somehow or another. Might as well give them just that little bit of space to do so. And that doesn't mean being completely out of touch with them. If you can still be in touch with them once in a while, that uh, you know, always leave your foot in the door if the mm -hmm. doors have open enough available mm -hmm. to leave your foot in. For sure. But yeah, let them go out and do some learning. Yeah. Now, while we're still talking about other partners, I wanted to mention um, I had a Reiki client last week, and the neatest thing came up. I, I still plan to write a post about this when I feel nudged to do so, but it ties in perfectly with this video. What came up is this other her twins karmic partner was actually on a soul level one of her greatest dearest friends so if we can sort of look at our karmic partners our twins karmic partners and soulmates and remember that on a spiritual level on a soul level we are actually all on the same team we are all we've agreed to play out these roles to help each other so your twins wife husband girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, whatever they're with, if they're with somebody, is not the evil person we sometimes want to make them out to be. They're not like the devil that's like, oh, they're hurting them, and oh, if I could just get them away from that person. They're, they're doing their job. They're serving such a high purpose. Again, I don't know how many times Rob and I have said, if we hadn't been with our other people, we wouldn't be together. Those people that we were with served so much lessons for us that helped us heal. And just from a completely left field point of view, when someone's been really, really hurt in a relationship and they say no more relationships and they're by themselves and not with anybody, usually they're quite stuck. They're also not growing. They're not interacting. They've lost complete faith in the whole process. If if you and your twin are both still capable of accepting the thought that other relationships are possible, that means that the connection that you had didn't destroy anybody. It just was just felt unworkable. Yeah. So maybe celebrate the thought that, that <laughs> your twin has not given up on relationships altogether. They're still willing to go out and learn and try again. Yeah, they're not walled up in their house yeah. with their heart closed. And, and don't think you've destroyed them. Yes. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I just have to tell you, if you see me like shivering, it's just because I or shaking, it's because I'm shivering. It's starting to get cold now that our sun's going down a bit. You can't see it as much. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here vibrating as well. Before, before the video, when it was discussed that we should be doing a video outside right near sunset, I'm thinking it's going to be cold. I, okay. This is all predictable. It doesn't I mean, matter. I might, outside. I might have to snuggle anyway just <laughs> yeah, to keep her warm. Yeah. We got two more points to go. Yes, we do. Uh, oh, mm, uh, mm, this is more your specialty. <laughs> Telepathy. Energy and love sending. So again, commonly the people that are watching the videos, again, I'm not trying to stereotype or anything, but commonly it's the 5D person. It's the one that's usually the, you know, the higher up in the realms kind of spiritual person. And if that is you, then not that it has to be 3D energy. People can also have telepathy um, and send energy and send love. 
but it, it seems more natural for the 5D person to tap into that. And so if that's you, how you can tap into that is simply by connecting with your natural 5D self that you find it easy to already do, if you do. For me, it happened very naturally just by meditating. And then I was able to just talk with Robin, hear him. He wasn't consciously aware of the communication, but it didn't mean his soul wasn't. His soul was very aware of the communication. And we were able to heal things on such a higher more easy powerful level than trying to work things out on the 3d really concrete earthly level where things are you know slow and just hard and dense so telepathy if um you feel guided to sending energy if a lot of people can feel their twin and feel when their twin is going through something and they're like am i supposed to help with this what do i do with this energy if you feel guided to, you can help them through that. You can send them love. You can help shift the energy for them on a higher level. Or you can just send them love and say, this is for you to heal with. And I'm going to remove myself. Always go with your own intuition and your own guidance because it totally depends. Sometimes you are guided to help them work through it. Again, because you're connected, right? Other times you're guided to pull away because no, it's, it's for them to learn on their own. And if you're going to step in, then they're not going to really pick up the lesson and get it. So it, it's totally dependent often. When it comes to telepathy, uh, there are some people who are spiritually aware that feel that they have no gifts of telepathy whatsoever. If you're one of those people that just doesn't think you can com communicate using telepathy, I would suggest just doing something as simple as praying. You could pray directly to your twin. And love that. And, or if you wanted to, you could even do something as abstract, maybe, as praying to whatever creator you would pray to and just ask them to pass the message mm -hmm. or pray through them. That would be another angle. If you don't, it at least, I, what I'm trying to say is, is even if you don't think you can communicate with telepathy, try. It just might be getting through anyway. And yeah, you know, if, if, if it doesn't seem to, don't worry about it. Uh, sometimes you can try and succeed and never know it. And if you, and if you don't try at all, well, then you probably are not going to succeed. So try. So true, because the, the good thing is it's always getting through. Even if you don't see uh, material evidence of it, because you're connected, like you have this strong cord between you, this energetic cord that can't be broken. So anytime you send energy or pray or ask for help or send guidance, send love, they're getting it, whether they're aware of it or whether you're aware of it. They are absolutely getting it. And someday you will see evidence of that. It may not be for a while. It may be months, could be years. Sorry to say, <laughs> nobody likes to hear that, but they are receiving it. Um, point number five? Yes. So point, you... Point number five. This, this this one steps on on to the outside edge it's <laughs> outside this, this, this is this is for the for the few that will actually really truly understand and believe that it really matters but I really like this one helping clear past life stuff it's almost unconceivable to me that as twin flames since you both started at one place that you would spend that you would spend all your twin flame existence not together ever. <laughs> it's unless you just happen to become twins like one lifetime ago. <laughs> In the equivalent, if you're just very, very, very new twins, uh, chances are you've had many opportunities to cross paths in life, just, just like the rest of your soul group. You, most of the time, your soul group has been traveling together for quite a while especially if you get to the level of actually being in touch with your twin. So in my mind, chances are very, very good that you've crossed paths with your twin in previous lives. And usually that's going to have the same styles of struggles that it would now, except in previous times when both of you were even 
less in touch with yourselves, less knowledgeable about yourselves, it was probably more traumatic. So bringing energies forward from past lives is likely going to happen. And those energies are likely going to be trying to be stronger than the more connected version that you have now through other times of learning. So yes, with, with past lives, we've often had at least one past life with our twin flame, if not many. Um, for Rob and I, what I discovered when I was working with a Reiki lady who was very intuitive and was able to pick up other things, she didn't just do Reiki, she discovered that Rob and I had a past life in Egypt where we were both punished for uh, being together. And even though on a conscious level I didn't remember that, and I'm sure Rob didn't remember that, that sticks in the soul memory. So you might have some sort of trauma with your twin flame, which is very common. It's very, very common that we've had a past life with our twin that's ended in some sort of trauma where one of you died, one of you was killed, one of you was hurt. Something bad happened from being together. So what you can do, because past lives, again, really aren't past, all timelines are actually happening now. And I know that's really hard for the left brain to kind of process. But everything is happening now, which means we can go and change that timeline. So you can go in meditation or in a past life regression or other ways in the 5D realms and work through that. You can send your twin healing energy. You can talk to them, again, the telepathy, and remind them that that was then. This is now, even though it's all now. You can tell them it's okay. And you can even go back and replay that memory that you now have. If, if you have a past life remembering of, you know, trauma or something, you can go replay it and change the scenario. So for example, Rob and I, he was put into jail for us being together. I went and I worked with him on a higher level in my meditations. And I would remind him, you're safe now. It's okay. We've healed that and we're able to release it. And I would heal it. So what I would do is I would replay that whole memory and change the events so it didn't happen the way we remembered it happening. That was a way of clearing it. In this life, when I was first meeting Angie, I always did have this little feeling that we shouldn't be together. And I always wrote it off as a thought that there was an age difference between us in this life. Uh, or uh, no, no, too big of a spiritual difference. I, I was always looking for those excuses yeah. to say, nah, you know, we, we really shouldn't be together. Even though I really enjoy being with you and we have a good time, no, we shouldn't be together. It was quite the battle within me. I think I was remembering a bunch of past life feelings of we shouldn't be together. Yes. And I was trying to validate it with excuses from this life. Very much so. So yeah, often, even though they don't remember on a conscious level, there's a deep soul memory that's telling them, this isn't safe, I'm going to get hurt, you're going to get hurt, I don't want to come close to you because it ended badly before. I've known people that have been in fires in past lives together and somebody has died, the other person then lives out the rest of their life and they're devastated being alone. You know, there's our experience. So many different things play out. So we can help heal, heal that and change the energy around that. So our twin now can feel an open channel and not feel the fear and go, oh, I don't want to be with you again because I remember all that. Again, everything we share in all of these tips is from our own experiences. And I can't tell you how much it helped when I worked with Rob six months very intensely of sending him energy talking with him telepathically, clearing those, those old wounds from past lives, and it, it totally opened the door for union. Two things. The first one I think is very valid, and the second one is just me playing. Uh, if your twin or yourself feels that maybe you shouldn't be with your twin, but you can't explain why, if you can't come up with a reason, chances are it's a reason that is not necessarily connected to this life. Yes. And the second thing is, is in our Egypt life, uh, we were really being bold and daring. You could use the term playing with fire <laughs> by, by being together. And in this life, when it comes to campfires, we both love playing with fire. The playing with fire still is the same. It's just we express it differently this life. That's funny. 
Um, one other thing to address in terms of past life healing, you may be asking, well, how do I know if I've had a past life with my twin? There's several ways to know. You can actually go and get a past life regression. Um, you can just meditate. Some people just remember past lives. Oftentimes, if you meditate and just go in that meditation with the intention of learning, you will get flashes, you may get memories, you may just see images or even just feelings and know something wasn't right. I remember something doesn't feel good. Trust those. We often think we're making it up. With a past life memory, it, it feels like we're just creating it in our mind. But trust it because it's real. There's a difference between creating and perceiving. If, you, if you're getting those signals and not understanding them, it's, it's just your antenna working better than you understand. Yes. Yes. So as we say, this is only five tips. There are many tips. If you have your own, feel free to share them in the comments so other people can benefit as well. And on the note of sharing, we would love it if you shared this video, if it's been of benefit to you. Because again, our goal, we're, we've been not really guided to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. We're more guided to do videos and writings and stuff like that to help the collective, to help as many people at a time as we can. So the more people that we can help with sharing of videos and sharing of our writings, the more people we can all serve, not just us, but all of us. Because again, we're all collected or all connected as a collective and we're here to help raise the vibration of all of us so we can raise the vibration of Earth. And that's what we're doing is creating not just union with ourself, with our twin, but with the entire universe. So please feel free to share. We're happy if you subscribe. We, we don't often say that, but it doesn't mean we don't welcome it. And we just also want to say we love you all that watch yes. our videos. We are so honored to have you as part of our collective family, our twin flame and divine counterpart family. And um, we will certainly be back with more. We have started kind of a pattern of Wednesdays seems to be our new video day. It used yeah. to be Sundays. Sundays and we would post them Mondays. Now we've been posting them on Wednesdays. So it's been alternating. One Wednesday is a tips to union video. And then the next Wednesday is a question and answer video. And, and if this video has created any uh, questions or comments that lead towards another question, <laughs> don't be afraid to send that to us because the next week, well, we get to uh, collect up our questions for questions and answers and uh, give them a shot too. Yes, and we have lots of those, but we'll just add it to the list and keep answering them. Okay. So on that note, I think we've covered it all and um, we'll be back with more very soon. We love you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.